All right. So now knowing what we know about adding, about adding and subtracting fractions, um, basically, in general, we're now going to be applying the exact same rules. We're going to be doing the exact same thing. So if you guys look at this, we, the first thing we want to do is, again, identify what is the LCD. What is the common term? Now, what we practice in adding and subtracting, this should be fairly familiar with you guys. You look at your fractions. And you could obviously say this is 6 over 1, right? But 1's not going to be. One's always going to be common. So the common denominator between x plus 3 and 3 is? 3, three times x plus 3. It's just going to be the product of the two uh, denominators. So now what we do is we take that LCD and we multiply it times every single term. So I have 3 times x plus 3, 3 times x plus 3, and 3 times x plus 3. So do you guys see how I multiply that common denominator times everything just like I did over there? Do you guys see? It's the same thing. Yes? This is the common denominator. These have, these have expressions as your denominators. Over there, we have numbers as our denominators. So we got to find the common denominator between x and x plus 3. What is the smallest expression that 3 and x plus 3 divide into? It That's it. Three? Huh? No, x plus 3 does not divide into 3. Okay. So now, what we do is since we're multiplying this, yes, Diamond? Um, so really the You're basically multiplying by 3 times x plus 3, which these you can always write as over 1. Okay. So it's basically in the numerator. Okay. So the <coughs> yes. Okay. So now what you guys notice is when we multiply these, again, now we kind of go back to our simplifying days, what we kind of did over here. Whenever we notice that something is the same in the denominator as in the numerator, that divides to 1. So what I have here is 3 times 10, which is 30. x plus 3 times 10 equals 6 times 3, which is 18, times x plus 3. Does everybody see that? The threes cancel out, or threes divided to one, and I'm just left with x plus three times ten, which I wrote the ten in front. Over here, the x plus threes divided to one. I'm just left with three times ten. Okay. Now we can apply distributive property. So I have thirty plus ten x plus thirty equals eighteen x plus fifty four. Now on our last example, now what we need to do is solve for x. So we got to get the x's to the same side. Yes? Sure. 30 plus 30 is 60, right? 10x plus 30 equal, or 60, equals 18x plus 54. Then we can just determine which side do we want to get the x to. Yes? Because you ate potato chips and now need to take a drink of water which I told you to do, or I didn't tell you to do. Yes, you may. But I'd highly recommend you write this down since you haven't been doing that yet. So we take, now we just solve for x. So we get the x on the same side. So you're going to subtract to 10x. So we have 60 equals 8x plus 54. Subtract 54. And what I get here is 6 equals 8x. Divide by 8, divide by 8, x equals 3 fourths. So if you guys want to kind of break this down, all we're 